know, one of my favorite things about playing Heroclix is combining different teams and characters from across the different universes and properties into one awesome game. And we've been lacking a little bit in the indie department. So let's, let's show some turtles some love, since we haven't gotten a nice turtle set in a while. And let's sculpt swap. All right, this week we've got turtles from WizKids D&D line. Ooh, they both have some magic All stuff. All right, now that I've unpackaged my turtles, it's time for the turtle package. Get it? It's a play on the total package. So D&D, <laughs> the supplemental to the fifth edition D&D, uh, Tomb of Annihilation is where you can find turtles. If you want to read more about them, because I'm not going to be able to read everything about them, um, just to kind of preface what we're going to go into. So, Tortles are a playable character, a character, uh, playable race in 5th edition uh, with this supplement. You can you can always homebrew some stuff, um, but unlike the Ogre Zombie and the Manticore, um, the Tortles are built to actually be played as a playable race. Um, those two, you could homebrew some stuff, but it's much harder to get it to work, in my opinion. Um, unless you're just really good at that thing. But since they're a playable character, not to get on too many tangents, since they're a playable character, they're going to have a lot more information and a lot more details uh, filling out like the race and like different stuff about them. And so to save some time, I'm not going to read everything. There's just a lot. But it is an interesting race. There's a lot of interesting stuff in here. Basically, um, some key points. Uh, Tortles don't have their own pantheon of gods, but they often worship the gods of other races. So it's kind of interesting that, you know, they can join other groups and kind of pick up stuff from there. So they're kind of team players, but they're also kind of loners. Um, they're adventurers at heart. They have a saying that goes, we wear our homes on our backs. And so since they have that shell, they can use that shell for shelter <laughs> uh, or just... Uh, it's not just defensively, but truly, like, they do have, like, shelter uh, always with them. And so they're fairly nomadic. They kind of just, you know, travel around. The two that we pulled out of the box uh, both have some magic going on. And since they have some magic going on, I don't want to shoehorn these guys into any particular role because magic is can be whatever you really want it to be in D&D. There's, you know, I, it can be like a range attack. It could be some sort of healing magic. It could be a lot of different stuff. It could even be like necromancy and like, you know, uh, evil magic. Um, but since they, they have those magic effects on their sculpt, I don't want to stick them in too small of like a pool, so to speak. So I'll just pick out a few traits that they have here. So size is medium. They can weigh... It says average is 450 pounds. They can be more or less, of course. Average is in the middle. Uh, five to six feet tall. They are, of course, humanoid. Um, let's see. They have claws, so natural natural weapons. Uh, blades, claws, fangs would be perfect for them. Maybe something down dial with blades, claws, fangs. Probably not like going to open up with that since they do have those magic staffs. Or the one has a magic staff and the one just holding magic in his hands. Uh, I'm assuming they probably don't start off swinging with their claws. Uh, they've got hold breath as a trait. Uh, you can hold your breath for up to one hour at a time. Not you, the turtle can. Uh, turtles aren't natural swimmers, but they can remain underwater for some time before needing to come up for air. So they don't get faster in water but they can hold their breath for quite a bit. So this actually works really well with the dolphin team ability, or this works really well with the dolphin symbol, uh, since going forward, everyone moves the same in water for the most part. Um, the dolphin symbol will actually work perfect for these guys, since it's more of like a defensive, like you can't see me unless you're close enough kind of thing. Uh, this will work great for that since, you know, you can be like, my turtle's holding, holding his breath. That's why you can't see him. He's underwater. Uh, shell defense. Natural armor and shell defense. Um, shell defense is you can withdraw on your shell as an action. That's not really something that works super well. Uh, giving him some sort of action to disappear, I guess. I don't know. Um, but the natural armor is fine. Um, that would be like a dial full of toughness or maybe invuln or at least most of their dial is toughness invuln 
Uh, I could go Impervious or Invincible. That seems a little too strong, but maybe for like one or two clicks at the top would be fine. Um, and then, yeah, everything else is just like supplemental information. There's a ton of information on these guys and their little island and the creatures that inhabit it and everything else. But as far as picking a dial goes, I think we've got, got a pretty solid base to go on. I think if we go with just just the swimming and the ability to, uh, not uh, the dolphin symbol, not the swimming, they're not good swimmers, but if we go with just the dolphin team ability, or <laughs> I keep saying it, if we go with just the dolphin symbol and blades, I think we won't we won't sink ourselves in too tight of a kind of niche. So we'll go dolphin symbol, we'll go attack power is blades, and on HC Realms, when you search for an attack power or any power, um, it just has to appear somewhere on their dial. Same with like if you look for specific values, it just appears somewhere on their value. Ah, what are these? Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? A humanoid turtle? Yeah, so the, the obvious answer would be the TMNT guys, clearly. But I don't want to go with the obvious. Let's just completely skip them. They'd be fine fits. Um, although they're more martial artist, and I'm looking for more of like a magic user anyhow. So maybe they're not even great fits for these guys. Uh, the Pacific Rim guys are out kind of right away because they're colossal. Although they are on a one by one base, the colossal symbol, the somewhat mystics kind of team ability. And then they're just basic close combat attackers. And I'm not dealing with basic close combat attackers. I've got some interesting guys. Deadpool the duck now. He's got dolphin. He's got some running shot. He's got six range. He's got a support power. I really like this. He doesn't have that defensive uh, invuln or impervious or uh, toughness or like anything like that going on. He does have two clicks of regen. He's got the continuity tokens and prob control protected prop control he's also a team player which kind of fits in with their willingness to adapt to other cultures and races so i can kind of see this guy but i'm going to say no just because of one of the big things is those defense abilities maybe i should have added that to the search um but i'll look through what we've got right now since i don't want to i don't want to narrow it too far spider viking this guy's interesting. He's really cool. He's got a really cool dial. And this would work for most of the time, except I don't want just a close combat piece. I want some range. I want some interesting stuff, at least. Um, some support powers. Fantastic Four Triton. He has charge hypersonic speed, but only if he occupies water terrain when activating it. That would be fine for this guy, because they're eight speeds, not, like, super fast. Um... They don't get faster in water, but I can look past that. Starting with toughness is fine. I can kind of work with combat reflexes, like maybe you didn't hit the right spot on him or something, so it adds plus two to his defense. Uh, when establishing theme teams, choose a friendly character with dolphin symbol. He gets their keywords. That works fine. He's a team player kind of thing. Um, would like to see some range, but the prob is cool, so I'll add him to the maybe pile. Uh, then we've got Lizard, just straight close combat. Doesn't really do anything extra. He does have some healing abilities, but I, I want some more like range kind of stuff, some support powers at least. Uh, the other Triton, so he does more of the same. He does have this constricting coil trait, which is different, and the Terragenesis twice trait, which is fine if you want to couple that with the ability to uh, intermingle. He's, uh, like, the turtles are friendly, so they can work good with teams. I guess that can kind of work with that. I already have a Triton on here, though, and this guy's just going to start straight off with blades. I do like the reducers, but my other one has toughness, so I'm going to skip him. Namor, uh, this is a solid transport dude. It is a chase, so I don't really feel like using it just because of that specific reason right there. The two clicks of Invincible and then two clicks of Impervious, also not great. The Super Strength, not great. So I think he's out. Giganto uh, is not doing anything but close attacking, so he's out in my opinion. Pirate Deadpool, now we've got some running shot. We've got six range. Invuln to Toughness, I can deal with that. Enhancement, I can deal with that too. Those are all things that I can work out in my brain 
that a turtle could do. Um, solid gold gun with diamond bullets, the compensator. Pirate Deadpool can use penetrating psychic blast. When he does, replace his attack value with the highest attack value from all characters on the map. So I could get behind Pensai and get behind the de the dolphin thing. Um, it would be a shame to use a pirate Deadpool. And of course, I also don't have one, so probably could have just skipped him because of that. Death Adder, that's a solid no, unless his attack power is something. Blades, Claws, Fangs, Poison, Giant Reach 2, Damage Delk to characters 100 points or less cannot be reduced below 1. Cool, like cool everything, but not what I'm looking for. I want some cool range and support powers. Defense is solid. That's exactly what I'm looking for, a full dial of invuln to toughness kind of thing. Starting with Blades, again, don't like it. Uh... The exploit doesn't really translate unless I'm going to say that that's like the magic, but yeah. And then Lizard takes damage from an attack, heal him one click. When he has two action tokens, he can use regen as a free action. So he's got a really good dial. It's just, again, no support powers, all blades, uh, the solid dial of toughness. That's good, actually. That's the one thing that I redeems him in my mind but i need i need more i need support powers i need range i need something this older triton does more of the same that the first one does without the prob and i really like the prob he can use perplex though so there's that um oh it can only target characters within the humans keyword within three squares yeah that's bad uh fear itself atuma i don't really see these guys as leaders uh, but I do like posing characters within six squares and occupying water terrain cannot be given power actions. I like that. And then I like the generation of water terrain. So he's a maybe, but I really don't like the leadership. Um, and we're not going to go all the way through. Amphibian, mostly a close combat piece. Modifies speed value in water, which these guys don't. So we'll just cut right down to DC and see what we've got here Invuln toughness that's solid super strength not so much leadership I can take it or leave it placing water terrain I can take that or leave it uh, when Aquaman occupies water terrain he can use combat reflexes willpower and lines of fire drawn to him by opposing characters not occupying water terrain are blocked that's interesting especially comboed with the fact that he can generate it not bad I like it. Uh, I just want him to have range or something. King Trench. Close combat piece. Uh, I feel like I'm just going to... He does have outwit, so there's that. Uh, protected poison combat reflexes regeneration toughness. That's his whole down dial. That's way too much regen for these guys. Generic shark. Underwater predator. You can use charge if he's in water and exploit weakness and modify speed value plus three. It's a good figure. I like it, but uh, not for this particular use. Black Manta. I actually think this guy... Yeah, he does have five range. Um, when he hits, place a hit character adjacent to Black Manta or generate a water terrain marker in his square and hit character square. So you, a little bit magic-y kind of stuff going on. Bottom dial blades. Not bad. That'll be a maybe. Um... Aquaman, no range, solid defense, super strength doesn't really make sense in my opinion for these guys, just how I'm picturing them, so I'm going to skip Aquaman. Aqualad, on the other hand, he's got TK, energy explosion with 6 range and 3 targets, but only once per game. I can deal with that, that's, that's enough range, but it's not great. He does have the Titans Reborn ability, I'll put him in the maybe, because... Six range, three bolts is pretty solid, and I can activate it at any point in his dial. Uh, probably using it top tile, but still pretty solid. Um, Dolphin, that switch click. I don't really know how the Super Sense shape change combo works. I guess magic is what I will say. The four range, two bolts is fine. The charge plasticity, do not have speed value when you're in water, is fine. Not great. That's pretty fast to be coming out of the water. 10 speed and then you can swap back and forth between the two dials it's a solid maybe <laughs> which i feel like i keep saying uh, another aquaman doesn't do anything that that other one didn't i don't think black manta 
Here we've got Devil Ray, Energy Explosion, Poison. When he hits with a range attack, you give him that Poison Dart marker. That all that works for me as far as magic goes, so that one's fine in my opinion. Uh, uh, we've got Killer Croc. More close combat. Power make three close attacks. Pretty solid, but no magic-y stuff. King Shark. No magic-y stuff. He's a great, great piece, but uh, no magic-y stuff. Yeah, this King Aquaman doesn't do anything other than his special down dial thing where he can generate water, and I'm not playing them on a zero attack, zero speed dial, so that's out. Killer Croc out Atlantean for range not terrible I want my turtles to be more than three clicks though I don't want them to just get annihilated right off the bat same with the trench seeking it's not bad it's just more generic close combat kind of stuff trident of Neptune relic of Atlantis at the beginning of your turn choose at least one Enhancement, Leadership, or Energy Explosion, and Psychic Blast. Energy Explosion or Psychic, psychic Blast. Uh, yeah, that's a solid option. This is 018 Aquaman. So it starts with Invuln, goes to Toughness, and then the bottom dial is like when they'd be like frenzied, I'd guess. I do not like the high point cost, but that's fine. Uh, sol subtle telepathic push. You can use outwit or perplex target characters with the dolphin or transporter dolphin symbol anywhere on the map. Yeah, that's fine. I actually really like this guy. And then we've got Mara, who is a TK. No range printed. Does she have anything that gives her anything? Range value is equal to 1 plus the number of squares of water doesn't really work for these guys unless there's some sort of aquamancer, uh, which Mara kind of is. She's like a waterbender lady. Uh, day without water. Opposing character within three squares is given a non-free action after resolutions placed a thirst token on that character's card. I can I can see it, but I dial just seems weird. So I'm going to say no. They'd have to stay in water to do range stuff, and they're not necessarily, they are I mean, they're just not aquatic people. They're, so, trench, sidestep, carry ability, eh, nothing super impressive. This is one I actually really like, because I can, he's got five range, which I didn't realize, but he's got five range. But the thing I really like about this Aquaman, I think the thing everyone really likes about this Aquaman is summon the undead shark. So once per game, give him a power action, place up to four undead shark bystander tokens as described on this card, each adjacent to a different opposing character within range. Add two to your action total this turn. It's a really fun. Um, it's only once per game, but I can pretend like that's a necromancer doing that, right? Like I can make one of my turtles a necromancer and that's just really fun. Uh, Aquaman can use steel energy. It's traded. Uh, I mean, a necromancer could use steel energy, so I guess I can live with that. When an opposing character is KO'd, heal Aquaman one damage and clear. And all clear squares within one square of that character are water terrain. So yeah, I actually really like this Aquaman. What's this undead shark do? Blades. Okay. At the end of your turn, KO this character if it doesn't occupy water terrain. Okay. So I'm only going to do that once per game, and if they get placed in a water terrain, they're fine. If not, then they go away. But I at least get to use them that turn. Uh, I really like this guy. I think I was kind of sold on this Triton, but I think after getting down to these two, I really like that ability to swap powers, and then I really love the Necromancer thing. So I think I'm going to go with double Aquaman this week. All right. First things first, I had to drill holes into these turtles before I painted them because I needed to have a solid base to set them on. And luckily I've got plenty of little random scrap metal pieces that I can attach them to. So drilled my holes, filled them with super glue, placed the magnets. I made sure the magnets were facing the same way, but it doesn't really matter since the other magnets will follow suit however I feel um, I started off with a really pale green it's actually the same green that came with the ogre I think it was like 
undead flesh or something. I started with that, and I wanted to do an undercoat, quote-unquote undercoat, um, on their skin, the their tortily bits. And I just wanted to do that so then when I covered them with my base coat, I would have different, I'd have contrasting colors between the parts of their skin and the rest of them. So I had to be a little bit careful. These guys are, of course, a lot smaller than the previous two figures, but that was a fun challenge. And uh, yeah, then I, I took my darker green and I went over the majority of the rest of their body with it. I eventually got a bigger brush and just covered everything with that green. Um, tried to keep it away from their clear effects the little hand goblet or hand laser I don't know what it's called uh, magic and then the staff's magic thing and here you can see just the basic coating as you can kind of tell two different colors came out um, from this point I had to mix some stuff up to decide what I wanted to paint their shells and unfortunately I went with a tannish color which turned out really good on the guy with the magic staff and because of my color scheme didn't turn out great on the one with the stick but you won't see that until the very end um, so yeah at this point I'm just coloring in all the little shell bits which one has kind of like a cloak that's draped so he's got some weird spots where his shell's showing and the other one has like more of like a shawl so he had less shell showing, but there's a really amazing detail on the little shell bits. So it actually, even with my terrible painting, it actually came out really well. Then I just mixed some really dark brown, colored in their wood staves, make sure that those looked wooden. And then at this point, I'm just mixing some white with uh, that same brown to go over a little bit more over their shells. I mixed some white with that purple as well. I wanted to give my Necromancer a deep purple kind of cloak. I really wanted some extra color to come through, and I also secretly wanted him to look like Donatello, but that didn't happen at all. Um, I was going for Michelangelo with the other guy, and that also just didn't work. It actually messed me up because it ended up matching the color of his shell too much. You can kind of see the color of the shell there. But I wanted more of like a red and didn't want it to look like Raphael. But I did want it to look similar to the uh, aforementioned Ninja Turtles. So if this guy comes in focus, you'll be able to tell uh, he's got a lot of detail going on. Um, these are roughly the size of the pre-sculpt change hero clicks. So they're a lot smaller than the Manticore and the Ogre Zombie but they've got a ton of little detail despite that, so it's actually really awesome, like all the little details they managed to fit in. You just have to be really careful with any detail work that you do because you'll have to go back over a few more times, which I did here. Um, at this point, I applied a little bit of that same purple and really like dry brush kind of strokes to the little effect on his staff. Um, you can tell that his skin is the same color as like his tunic kind of thing. So at this point, I, I wanted to fix that. The orange colored one, I'll call him. Um, I accidentally made his belt, his little pouches, the same color as uh, the tan that I was using for his shawl. So I didn't want it to be orange on orange on orange. So I colored those in black afterwards and his little fire effect kind of thing. I used the same orange, but I just, again, just dry brushed it on. So it came out very, very thin, made sure it was like really watery so that you still get that clear effect, but there's just a tinge of color to it. Um, at this point I tried doing their faces and it was actually a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. I had a few mess ups that I had to clean off, but other than that, for the size, I mean, those aren't great eyeballs, but they'll work. And yeah. So I've got this little metal thing that they both can sit on. Uh, at this point, I'm just doing my dry brush. It actually didn't take very long to color both of these guys. And uh, yeah, I think I'm getting a little bit better. Although I do wish I used my purple dry, or not dry brush, my wash. I do wish I used my purple wash because, man, that dry brush <laughs> or the wash the reddish wash on the cloak just makes it look kind of desert dusty, which is fine. That's actually kind of a cool uh, 
kind of a cool image, I guess, is like he's been like traveling for a long time and his purple cloak is all dusty from the travels. That's fine. Um, but yeah, I think, I think the colors really came out pretty well. I think, uh, I made a few mistakes and was able to kind of correct them. So that's fine as well. Um, took a little bit longer than I was expecting just because the size, there's not a ton of painting to be done. It's just a lot of corrective work and a lot of like really fine detail work, which is, you know, it's just part of the process. It's a different kind of process because these guys are so small, but it's just a different, uh, different sort of process and not quite as enjoyable as the big guys. I'll probably do another big one before I go back and do these guys again. But I really did enjoy doing these guys because, one, they're turtles, and that was just really as soon as I saw them on the shelf, I needed them. And two, uh, yeah, I just really liked. This is the first ones I've done with the effect. And then at this point, I'm tearing apart my Black Lantern Aquaman, I'm using my flat hobby knife to peel them off the base, and then I'm drilling the holes. You kind of just have to eyeball the holes on this one, so I put both sets of magnets under the turtle, eyeballed the holes, put in my glue, put my turtle on, and then cleaned whatever glue is underneath. The uh, Justice League Trinity War bases were like, at least this one was like super fragile and weird. I don't know what kind of plastic they use, but it like, my knife just sank right through it. It was very strange. Uh, there was no resistance. It was almost like crumbling. Um, but same thing there. And then, as you can see, they just pop right on the bases. These guys actually turned out really well as far as the bases go. Uh, the one covers the base a little bit, but I really like how they turned out. I think they dried really nicely, and I think they're actually a lot better and more interesting characters than the previous guys. So thank you, everyone, for watching Episode 4 of Sculpt Swap, and hopefully we'll have some more to come, uh, potentially even designing our own dial in a future episode. So stay tuned for that.